I like big butts and I cannot lie. Damn! Damn! Today, we've got the 2021 Land Rover Discovery. We've reviewed a whole bunch of seven passenger SUVs and today this Discovery is another one to notch on our belt. Now I have some sort of background on the Land Rover brand because my wife drives a Range Rover. Not a new one, an old one, and it always breaks down. So will this Discovery break down? That is the question. I highly doubt it will because they have improved a few things. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm also gonna talk about the front, I'm gonna talk about the side, I'm gonna talk about the back, the interior, the drive, and is this the new Discovery? Does it have any pieces of the last one? Well, we'll find out. For some people, they call this a Range Rover, but it's not. It's the Land Rover that's the group. Discovery is all by itself, along with the Discovery Sport. So people call it a Range Rover, and I don't know why, because Range Rover is its own little group. Right? It's got a Range Rover full size, the Range Rover Sport, the Range Rover Velar, and then of course the Range Rover Evoque, which is the tiny little guy. But back to this, this one is unibody, which essentially means that it's not body on a frame anymore. It just means that it's built all in one piece, which usually means that it's smoother, softer, more car-like, and maybe not designed to be totally off-roaded like the last generation, which people are upset about. So normally when we do off-road type vehicles, we obviously take it to this spot. And that's where we review these cars and give you sort of a full deep dive on how capable they are. Now, it's all on me. I decided not to do it with this specific Discovery because all I saw online and read was this is really a mall cruiser, which is kind of disappointing to me. And then I got in it and I started to drive it and realized all the features it had. Then I realized I made a mistake. I should have actually taken it to our little spot that we go off-roading with, because this would have actually done really well, but don't worry, the Defender is coming for that. But on the front here, it does have the R package, so it gives you all the black stuff. So you look at the, obviously, the Discovery nameplate right here, it's all in black, it's not in chrome, it has a nice, clean look. It's very rounded, it's very cleaned up. Um, it also has these little vents coming in, and it's nice, because they are actually rear, they go right into the coolers on both sides, left and right which is nice to have on both sides. It's actually fully legitimate. When I look at the front of this thing, it's actually real because you also have the flappers on the upper and lower, as you see here, and a nice clean camera that's hidden right there. I really like the way this thing looks. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But let's talk about this color for a second. This color is very similar to what made Range Rover really popular back about 15 years ago. Obviously my wife, as I mentioned, she's got a Range Rover Sport, the nice boxy one. She does not want to upgrade to this rounded thing. She wants a nice square boxy one. And in those years, they had somewhere very similar to this, the color, it was an orange and it was the number one most stolen SUV on the planet back then. Nobody could keep it in their driveways. Nobody could keep it in their house because it always got stolen if it had a color very similar to this one. So under the hood, there are two main versions. The first one is a P300, and that carries a two liter four cylinder that makes a whopping 295 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. The second one, which is this, is a P360, and that is a three liter that makes 355 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. Now they're both mated to an eight speed ZF transmission, ZF trans everything's got a ZF transmission. Yes, this one does too. They are all wheel drive. The most important piece of this is that it is lightweight. And lightweight is important because this thing has shed over 500 kilograms of weight because it has a ton of aluminum on it. It is basically the new F-150. So as we move to the side here, you can see these fancy headlights that sort of wrap around. These are cool looking headlights. Take a look at the detail. They are nice and clean. And they also make me feel that, yes, this obviously has some Range Rover pieces because this is definitely Range Rover. There's no doubt in my mind that is Range Rover. As far as wheels go, you can get them in 20s, 21s, and 22s. Take a nice fancy look at those. 
They are nice and black and fancy. And I like the way this kind of goes around and falls all the way down. I like the fact it says R Dynamic on the side. And yeah, it does have air suspension, so I can drop it. I can drop it a little bit more on the back when I'm loading it, but we'll get into that in a minute. As far as the side goes here, it's nice black. It's not color matched, which obviously this has on the R Dynamic. It also flows all the way back here. And you can choose what color you want up here, which is pretty cool. When you build them, you can kind of choose what, what you want to have up there in terms of color contrasting. <clears throat> but the biggest issue that people complain about is the fact that this glass doesn't connect up here. That is the biggest issue people complain because that's not how the original discoveries were. This new model doesn't have that and that's probably a big for a lot of people but it is what it is because remember dogs can still stand up in the back. That is why you're looking at one of these because it is a seven passenger, a big bloaty seven passenger. But before I jump to the back, I wanna talk about what we do at Accelerate all the time, and that is to check in our fender liners. Take a peek right here, this is plastic moving through, and then all of a sudden, we hit carpet. So it's half plastic, half carpet in the front. We'll get to the back in a second, but take a look at this dynamic line that goes all the way down, and clunk, it gets hit by these door handles. The front, and yes, it gets hit the back but the good thing is is these door handles have proximity in the front and the back and some brands actually don't have it in the back with the keys in your pocket you walk up to the car and you lock it or you unlock it in the back that is important to have another thing that's important to note is that in terms of length or wheelbase I should say this is 115 inches the Kia Telluride which is also a seven passenger or an eight passenger is 114 inches but what's mind-blowing is how this right there is 117 inches long. How is that 117 inches in terms of wheelbase? And this is 115 inches. That makes you think where they've come in the world today as far as putting people in something that's smaller. All right, so if you're one of those that are mad that this isn't like the old one and it's not as rugged and all that fun stuff, I got some news for you. Listen, at the end of the day, the person that's buying this car is gonna care about this. They're gonna care about the fact that this is not metal anymore. They're gonna care about the fact that this license plate is not centered. They're gonna care about the fact that this thing tows 8,200 pounds. But for me, I like the fact that it looks like a transformer. I really like the fact this back is nice and square. It is rounded a little bit, but I really like that fact. I like the way it looks. The back is probably my favorite part about this truck. And I really like the fact that they got rid of those ugly vertical ones on the last model. This is sweet. It's modern, it's fresh, it's got a great outlook, and I really like the fact, I know you don't care about it, but I like the fact that it's composite and not metal. And if I want to be lazy and I want to pull up my trailer, because I can tow, as I mentioned, 8,200 pounds, I can simply press some buttons and this will drop. I got full air suspension and this will lower the booty. Check that out, pretty sweet. But what is even sweeter, forget all I just said, is when you put these third row down, people are gonna complain that there's not enough space back here. But listen here, when you go to private school and you take Ollie and Oliver to school, they're not gonna care because their bags are at school. The people that are gonna buy this don't really need all the space behind this. They need the space when they put the seat down. And I'll show you what this does and how cool this is. When it folds down, I press this button, so they, all these cars have it, I press the button, this folds down. But this is the coolest part about it. Look at that second row move forward. That is money. And if I'm even lazier, and I wanna put the second row back forward, the front seat on the right side moves forward. How awesome is that? So give me all your complaints, but the old generation doesn't do that. Let's measure what's back here. Yes, there's not a ton of room. There's 10 inches, so pretty much total uses. But again, this is just a really a five plus two. It's not really a full seven passenger. It's a five plus two. Keep that in mind. Let's move these two down. I wanna show you how much space there is behind this third row and check that out. That is so cool. The fact that it comes back is so cool. Come back, there we go. And we have 42 inches, which is pretty much the exact same thing as that guy. And in terms of width, we've got 46 inches, but here is where it earns its keep, and that is in the height of stuff to come in and out. We've got 34 inches. You'll also notice that it's very flat. Like, you can make everything, all the seats flat. And because this doesn't have stadium seating anymore, which essentially means raised seating in the middle and the back row used to, if you guys remember the other generation or the old generation, it was sort of higher that gave it that stadium seat feel that you sit in the back, you feel like you're in a stadium. 
Um, but in this one, it's because it's a unibody, it's sort of flat all the way through. And you can see that when I put all these seats down, because this is where you can fit a ton of stuff. Okay, so all the way down here now, let's see how long we have, because that is a lot of room. You've got about six feet. That is a long, okay, six feet and just under four feet. So you can't fit a four by eight in here, but you've got 46 inches and six feet. But there's a lot of room. This is a big SUV. All right, so I'm gonna jump in the... Th so something to note about the Discovery's doors is that they like to close all the time. When I keep it open, it still likes to, it's actually hard to get in this full open position. It's got really strong sort of door pivots there. Now to get into the back seats, I wanna show you how easy it is. These have smart seats. Now by smart, I mean this. I simply, I can obviously put my hand here and I can slide it back and forth, pretty straightforward stuff. But I can push this button here. It rolls forward onto the position where I can manually slide it, like watch. Stop here, I grab the back, and I slide it forward. And it's pretty good. I mean, this does obviously, the, the rear tire comes in, and it's kind of not the widest thing in the world, but again, to me, this is a five plus two, not a full seven passengers. Now, when I put it back, though, check this out. It's automatic. That's smart seats for you. I like that. And I mean, like the Germans, they have the controls down here to, to fold the third row on both sides and obviously in the back. So you have three controls. That's pretty standard, but it's still a nice piece to have. So again, I want to move this forward. I want to jump in the third row to show you guys what it's like as far as me getting in the back. Slide it forward and let's jump in. Now, I do have one broken toe, so not the easiest for me and I just broke yesterday. So a bit of struggle here, but sitting in the back here, do I have the height? And it's got a good amount of leg room. When I had these seats all the way back in its maximum position, I'm five, eight and a half, and I had more than enough leg room and height. Yeah, you can see there's a ton of headroom. So two adults can definitely sit back here. And I like the fact that even though it can fit probably three children, smallies, they only have two seat belts. I really like that fact. And there's a ton of storage here. I can put a bunch of stuff here. It does have this little extra compartment back here. Mm, a little bit on the flimsy side. It doesn't stay up. It just keeps dropping. There is a USB back here. And on this side as well, there's another button. So there's two buttons. There's this, this button. That's a fake button. And then there's this button that opens up this little thing here. So it's just really flim, flimsy and kind of cheap. And in the back here, when I'm pushing against the panels, they're really flexible. I expect a little bit more substance. They've definitely put the money in the seat. The seat and the quality of the seat is amazing. It's really good quality. Feels solid. I, I'm much more comfortable than that thing over there. But yeah, feels good. And I like a decent enough size space back here. So nine USBs. And also as an option, this has something called air filtration system. So it can kind of take out the smells. It runs through a special air filter. So if the kids do do, it doesn't smell as bad in here, which is important to have on something like this. It is a five plus two in my mind, but this is one of the biggest five plus twos that I've sat in. All right, so the back door, let's hear the sound. Pretty solid, can't complain, feels good. It also has this little logo here and I've usually seen it on cars that are fully aluminum and maybe that's what it's there for. How to feel in the back. Same as the third row, good solid seats. I'm very impressed with these seats. Nice and soft and good feeling, good support, great armrest position. It's got this Tesla vibe in here in terms of the interior. It's got the same or similar type of material. Now, if you've sat in one of these and felt it, you know what I mean, they're very like, sort of minimalist, if that means anything. Just a minimalist vibe in here. Everything else, again, black headliner. I'm sort of in the middle here, so I don't get to see a sunroof. I get this smaller one up front and this massive one behind me, but in the middle here, it's kind of mini vanish with this, this venting up here. There's also venting down here, which is kind of nice. I have venting down here and venting up here for everybody to get a good airflow in the back, very luxurious. And as far as USBs and USB-Cs, there's USB-Cs. There's, ooh, wow, that's nice. There's two USB-Cs, one USB, and one cigarette lighter. In the back, you've got two USB-Cs and one cigarette lighter. And here you've got the fancy lights, and are they LED? Yes, they are. LED on my feet, LED on the top. I got my Bluetooth speakers just so I can talk up. Let's see this center, yep, feels nice and soft. You got HVAC controls that are very fancy, nice, turny, fancy stuff. In the back here, I've got my first class magazine holder, and yeah. I'm vibing. I like it. Now, fancy stainless steel pedals, I see. Now, the door panel feels small, solid, sort of used to the Range Rover, Land Rover stuff, and it feels more sort of minimalist 
vibes. And I talked about it a little bit in the back. This center console de definitely feels Tesla vibe-ish. If you take a look at this thing, it's very clean, not a lot going on. I really like the fact there's not a ton of piano black right here. There is some over here, but we'll get on that in a minute. It does have wireless charging. It's got a USB-C, and you can close these cup holders. Now, oddly enough, this cup holder has two different sizes, and I can hopefully pull out this piece, but yeah, two different sizes of cups, and I've got sort of a slider for my cell phone here, and then another sort of change pocket there. Um, but look at the volume control. It's right kind of hiding a little bit back here, but look how small this shifter is. And then a park button there, and let's check out this glove box. And there is another USB-C and a USB, and underneath that is a cooler. I've got two increments of cooling. I hit this button, nice and fancy. Now, think about this for a second. That car over there has a cool glove box, but it's done by an on and off switch, left and right. That was really cheap. For the price of that thing, which is twice the cost of this thing, this has a pretty good quality, if I should say so. Steering wheel is powered. I can just push it down here. Now, I cannot see anything. This is all has a haptic feel and it's all kind of, there's some clicky buttons, but I cannot see what any of these buttons look like until the vehicle is started. Also, when I shut the car and I close the door, this sunroof does close to kind of keep the car cool, which is kind of a interesting piece to think about. This has a 14 speaker Meridian sound system. Mentioned not very many speakers in the third row, but all the speakers seem to be in the front. I did listen to it and it sounds pretty decent. Everything else has sort of a nice solid feel to it. It's all kind of nice. This is kind of a rubberized weird feeling, but there it is. The glove box is just simple button. It opens like that. Again, like most Land Rover Range Rovers, not the biggest glove box in the world because the way their dashes are laid out, they have a lot of leg room. So a lot of leg room looking this way, not a ton, like a lot of dashes wrap around this way. This one does one of these and then sharps inward if that kind of makes any sense. It also does have sort of a hidden compartment right behind the HVAC controls that I pulled down here. Nice spot to put all your goodies, whatever you want to put in there. And again, everything is dark and black. There's not a lot of buttons to visually look at when the car is off. It's only when I start the car, I can see the buttons. Um, something also interesting to note, this steering wheel, nice rugged sort of military look. And you would think that this is all steel, but this is plastic. This is a heated steering wheel, but it's plastic. But listen to the shifters plastic on the steering wheel, not plastic on the shifters. So this is an 11.4, what they call PV Pro screen. Now take a look how clean this is. This is probably one of the most elegant screens I've actually seen in a vehicle. A lot of them are very tech oriented, very like fancy, quick, fast. This is like elegance, a ton of elegance. So let's yeah. Land Rovers are very finicky. I've tried to run this thing for about three times now and it doesn't like it when I'm not running the car. When I'm in accessory or ignition mode, it likes to shut off all the time. But that's okay because the quality of this 11.4 inch PV Piri Panipuri screen over here is very clean and elegant. Like take a look at the clarity of this thing. A lot of the screens we've obviously reviewed are very like tech and fast oriented. This one is more like We'll just run at our own pace. Now take a look, look how clean it looks. It look, you have three separate bars, one for the nav, the other one is for the phone, and thirdly is for media. But take a look at this thing. As I click this button, you've got your different accounts, your seats, your climate control, your cameras. Great cameras, and we'll show you in this little slide here. But the eco data is pretty nice to see. When I hit this eco data button, so I can see my, my liters per hundred kilometers, my average speed, my percentage of driving score, how long the car's been running for, my brake pads, which is pretty cool, and obviously a few other features. Driving style, energy impact, eco tips, and history. Now you can't adjust any of these things up here. It won't let you do anything because you have to just basically, it's like dummy proof, where if you have your heated steering wheel on now, it obviously illuminates, and that shows you how much energy is being used eco tips and history. Obviously it gives you some stuff to improve on and just basically a lot of fluff if you ask me. Uh, moving on from there, you can hit four by four. This is the important part. This makes me feel like I'm driving a real off-roader type vehicle. As you can see here, when I press OK, look at this. It gives you your angle of inclination on both sides, your altitude, but also your locking diff and your suspension on all four corners. That is cool, especially when it takes into account weight sensing. Well, I don't know why this is not available, but essentially it gives you the, the okay, get out of there. It essentially gives you the limit, it's because the door's open, but it essentially gives you a limit of how much you can weigh based on the air suspension being up or down. And these are all your different modes, which you can actually adjust right here on the center console. You've got eco, comfort, grass, gravel, 
mud ruts, and then obviously sand, rock crawl, and wade. Pretty cool to have all this stuff. It does have a low range gear and a two speed transfer case, which are pretty sweet as I scroll down here. I simply hit this button low and it takes me to my low transfer case. Pretty awesome. Now let's get back into the next one and that is vehicle dimension. So that again uses the air suspension to tell you how much space you have. Now obviously it's weird because it tells you the length of the car here because it can detect that, but most importantly it tells you the height because when you go up and down with your air suspension that obviously changes. So that's interesting important to know. You can adjust in meters or feet. Kind of cool to have really fancy and clean a bit of data but not over the top data pretty basic in terms of that i'm really just excited about how good this camera is this is a great camera check this out all these different angles again another manufacturer that doesn't match the color on the outside of the car to this actual 360 image here they just take the 360 image and they slap any color on it Pretty cool, check this out. When I'm turning the wheel, that turns. But this is sort of a curved screen. It's not flat towards me, it's curved. This one has a specific ionizer so you can tell you the qual air quality inside the car. I don't know why it's showing green. It should be more like red or purple because I'm dying of carbon monoxide in here because this vehicle will not run this with the car being off. It always shuts off for whatever reason. But I have Purify and Ion which is kind of cool to have. But let's go to the most important part, and that is navigation, because I want to show you how fast this thing works. Now watch my finger. That will tell you how fast it works. Not the fastest system out there. Definitely one of the cleanest, but not the fastest. Enough about this. Let's jump into the driver's display, which is a 12.3-inch screen with heads-up display. And the heads-up display is the best part, because it gives me all kinds of data. So a lot of the Range Rovers have this digital display screen, so it's nothing new for my eyes to see. But take a look at how this is laid out in the center as I toggle here left and right. I've got the heads up display, all the data I can put in it. I've got my vehicle, I can show warning, tire information with the Y. I've got my music, my audio source that I can set up over there, my information, and my display, my layout, my off-road information. And yes, the heads up display again. Let's take this thing for a drive and see how it rolls. All right, so we're gonna take this Discovery for a drive. And first things first, if you're looking at buying something that is more off-roadish, then you should buy a Defender. Let's put this puppy in sport. Eco, comfort, grass, mud, sand. Mm, pull it back, sport on the engine. Steering is a little bit harder, but again, this is not designed to be used around courses. It's really designed for you, mom. It's done for you. Comfort, a lot of space, and it's smooth. Yeah, smooth and comfortable. If you're not used to driving Land Rover products, they have really tight sort of driver positions. The seats are kind of small and it's kind of squished. It's a big vehicle, but they always have this vibe. They're always about this tightness of it. All right, foot to the ground here. Oh, wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. It definitely feels... This thing just feels light. It feels light and energetic. Watch my steering. The one thing I wish about air suspension is I wish that they could just drive around slammed. Now, I have an option of off-road, normal, and access. But access only has a speed limit, so I can only drive so far in access, and that essentially means that I'm as low as I can to the ground. Aesthetically, air suspension is awesome because it just looks so cool when I have it slammed. It's like silence in here. Considering it doesn't have dual pane windows, it is quiet. If it was me and I was buying a Discovery, even with an R dynamic package, I would still probably not want to see paddle shifters. Yes, this has an eight-speed ZF gearbox, but paddle shifters on something that looks like this, negative. I feel like all these SUVs need a minimum of 350 horsepower, so it's kind of the same. This feels pretty much the same as an Audi Q7 in terms of acceleration. 
It's about six and a half seconds, which is about the same as the Audi Q7. There's not really much of a difference. Powertrain is what it is. I think the most important for somebody here is the size. Do they need the size of it? Are they okay carrying around this big booty in the back? Do they like the way this drives compared to the old Discovery? Or are they just not willing to look at it because the last Discovery felt very truck-like and this feels a lot more car-like? Maybe that's it, but it's worth giving a shot if you are looking for an SUV that is a seven passenger, that mm, not really 100% sure about all the digital stuff in here in terms of reliability. But if reliability is not on your docket list because you're only leasing them for three or four years, then it's worth taking a shot to look at one of these things because they're quiet, they can fit enough kids in the back, great visibility. Obviously, it's got a good reputation in terms of being taken care of because it is, after all, a Land Rover product. And yes, there's not too many people that have one of these things because they are sort of uniquely looking. So hope you guys like this review, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.